Hello friends, welcome once again to Rick's Garage. Today I'm going to review my new Motive Products Power Bleeder. I want to say right from the beginning that I'm not associated with this company. This is a non-sponsored review. I had to pay for this device just like you'll have to. So my opinion is going to be fair and honest. This is how it pretty much came out of the box. Um, got a hose, a pump, dial on it, tank. And it's got all these uh, plastic bags with all these adapters in it. This old red box didn't come with it. I found that to keep them in. I really don't know how I'm going to organize them yet. But uh, this is pretty much how, they, how it came. I'm going to be working on this Dodge Caravan. Uh, I just replaced the, one of the rear calipers. And the brake fluid is really dirty, so we're going to flush the whole system. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is rummage through all these adapters and see if I can find the one that fits this car. Some of them say the kind of car they, they have. This is a Chrysler product, and I've actually got the, the brake cover here, so I'm going to try to match it up. So this says it's for a Ford. It doesn't look like what I need. This says it's for a GM. Doesn't look like my adapter. This says Chrysler Dodge adapter. So this may be what I need. And this says a European adapter and then they've got some old style adapters. So it looks like we've got adapters for the three major uh, companies, uh, Chrysler, Ford and GM. It's nice that they put all these units, these adapter units in these plastic bags and label them. However, They've got the bag sealed in such a way that you've either got to tear it or cut it to get the item out. It would be nice if they had like a sandwich type bag that's sealed. You could seal and unseal it. That way you could keep them in the bag. So um, I put all the other bags away. Uh, in the Chrysler bag was this adapter that looks uh, quite a bit like my cover. And it's got these little gaskets. Um, also there's a cover that doesn't have a hole in it. Um, it must be for some sort of, uh, there may be some Chrysler Master Cylinders out there that have two covers and you may have to block one cover up while you're bleeding with the other cover. Um, it just still doesn't make a lot of sense because you've got two covers, you can just leave one cover on. So I don't know why we have this, uh, this extra cover here with an extra gasket and that it has no hole in it for uh, bleeding anything. So um, that's kind of a mystery, but we're not going to worry about that. All right, so it looks like we have to install the gasket into the um, adapter. That seems easy enough to do. Okay, so now I'm going to see how well this um, adapter fits on the Chrysler Master Cylinder. We're uh, at the uh, Master Cylinder. I've topped it off with brake fluid. I don't know if it was required to do that or not, but I did. And uh, I'm going to attempt to install this adapter and see how it fits. Okay, it seems to fit quite tightly. And uh, it's on there. So now we're going to plug it into the device. Place the device right here on the battery. So the device is there, and I'm going to connect it up. Okay, that appears to be connected up okay. Um, I'll turn the dial so you can see it. Now, like I said, I don't like this stupid hose being the way. I'm going to try to curl it around this way, see if I can get it out of the way somewhat without kinking it. Let's back off a little bit. There we go. So you get a better view of what's going on. All right, so now I haven't got any brake fluid yet. They say you do pump it up and, and to 15 pounds. So we're going to uh, attempt to pump it. Try to hold this hose out a little bit. So with no fluid in there, it takes quite a bit to pump it up. I imagine if we had fluid, it would probably pump up a lot easier. So 
So we've been pumping for quite a bit and we're not at the 15 pounds yet. Like I say, this hose is exactly in your way. You have to let it sit for a little bit and make sure it's holding pressure. Um, uh, they say to check for leaks. I don't think it's so much leaks as to make sure you have a good seal. And it doesn't seem to be moving. I'll give it a few minutes. So I'm gonna go away, come back in, in a little while and see how it was holding pressure. Uh, right now it is uh, just about one o'clock in the afternoon here in the Northeast. So I'm gonna uh, shut off the camera and we'll let it sit for a little while and then we'll come and check it. Well, it's been about 35 minutes. I've just returned from lunch and as you can see the dial is still straight up and down so it hasn't lost any pressure whatsoever. Now I'm going to carefully release the pressure they say just to turn the, the cover. Okay, that was easy enough. So I can see the stupid thing still in the way here. Okay, the cover is off, and we're going to pour some uh, brake fluid in it. Now it, um, now it does not say how much fluid to put in it, but it does say not to leave the fluid in it when you're done with it. You have to clean it out. So I'm going to put just uh, one quart in. See how we do with that. long as there's enough to, uh, I'm going to look inside there, as long as there's enough to, to go inside the um, tube, it looks like there's plenty. Okay, so we're going to put the cover back on, then we're going to pump it up. Stupid thing in the way again. And I can see the fluid going in the hose as I'm pumping. I imagine you want to have it all up high. I don't think you want any of it sagging down low. quite a bit of pumping involved to get it up to the 15 pounds and now we're going to go over to the rear wheel now as with any time you're bleeding you want to do the wheel that's farthest away from the master cylinder and that happens to be the wheel that I replaced the caliper on so it's going to work out pretty good all right we're um, we're ready to bleed I'm using the uh, also ordered the Genesis uh, a uh, bottle to uh, capture the uh, fluid. So we're ready to release the bleeder nut, which I had previously loosened so it wouldn't be too hard. And here comes the fluid. So oh, you can see the air coming right through. It's filling up the bottle. Let me open it up just a little bit more. There we go. We see air coming through. And we want to wait till we get nice clean fluid. But they say, is all the air coming out? Wow. You can see the fluid starting to get a little clearer now. Still little tiny bubbles coming. 
While this is going on, I'm going to check and see what my pressure looks like at the uh, tank. It's dropped a couple of pounds, but nothing uh, significant. And you can see it looks like nice clear fluid coming through now. So we're going to, and I don't see any bubbles. So we're going to uh, go ahead and close this up. Yep, nice clear fluid coming through now, no bubbles whatsoever. So this actually worked quite well. For the most part, this seems to be a pretty good little tool. Probably well worth buying. I'm not going to bore you with bleeding the rest of the wheels. They all are going to go, I expect, the same way. Probably won't take as long for each wheel because we've already got the main uh, part of the bleeding done. One thing I recommend when you're done using this device for the day is to put a couple of nails in the wall somewhere and hang the uh, adapter up and then let it, see if I can follow this down, let it run down into the um, device. So in other words, just, uh, let me back up the video a little bit. Yeah, so just, uh, hang the, um, the adapter piece up while it's still connected and then let the hose hang down and let all the uh, residual brake fluid run back into the uh, tank. Um, I, I let it sit for a couple hours or overnight just to get everything back in it and then from there they say to empty out the tank. So uh, that's all I've got. I'll leave you with this and uh, we'll see you next time.